Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're talking about something really exciting for gamers, playing your Steam PC games natively on Android with the brand new game native emulator version 0.3.1. This is a big step forward in bringing the full Steam experience right to your phone. Now, a little background before we start. Game native is actually a fork of the Pulvia Steam client emulator. Pulvia's development has stopped, but game native is continuing the project and showing real progress. In fact, with this update, developer shared gameplay footage of the game Stray Cat running on Android, and the performance looked very solid. So, what's new in version 0.3.1? This update mainly focuses on improving stability. First, it brings enhanced compatibility with a variety of Steam clients, especially for devices with limited power. Next, it fixes keyboard bugs inside container environments, so the keyboard finally opens properly. Another important fix is that games no longer close when you background the app. And finally, Steam Cloud integration has been improved, which means your save files now sync more reliably. Now let's talk about what you need to get started. You'll need two things, the official Steam app and the game native emulator. If you already have a Steam account with games, you can skip the next step, but if you're new, go ahead and open the Steam app. Log in or create a new account, and on the home page, scroll down until you see the free games section. Tap on it, then select the all category to browse the full list. Start adding a few free games to your library. It could be something light and fun like a story about farting or Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. Once that's done, you can close the Steam app. Next, open the game native emulator. You'll be prompted to log in with your Steam credentials. Enter your username and password, then wait for a notification from your Steam app. You'll see a new sign-in request. Tap on that and approve it. Once that's done, head back to the emulator. Close any pop-ups that appear, and boom, your Steam library should now be visible right inside Game Native. Pretty cool, right? Before you launch any games, you'll want to tweak a few settings for the best performance. Tap on your Steam profile icon in the top corner and select Modify Default Config. Here's what you want to set. For screen size, choose 854 by 480. This helps with performance. Under graphics driver, Snapdragon users should select Turnip, while other processors and Snapdragon 8 Elite users should choose Vortec. For graphics driver version, set it to the latest 25.1.0. For DX wrapper, choose DXVK for most games or VKD3D for more demanding DirectX 11 titles. I'm going with DXVK here. Set your DXVK version to 2.3.1 and for audio, choose the pulse driver. If you want to see how your game is performing in real time, enable the show FPS option, then scroll all the way down down. Make sure your Box 64 version is set to 0.3.6, your Box 64 preset is set to performance, and startup selection is set to aggressive. Once everything is set, save your configuration. Before you go back, also disable download only over Wi-Fi in settings if you're using mobile data, and that's it. Your emulator is ready to roll. Let's test a few games to see how the new update actually performs. For the first test, I chose Combat Master, an online multiplayer shooter with a download size of around 3 gigabytes. Unfortunately, this game gave me issues. Each time I tried launching it, the emulator crashed right after startup. I retried a few times, but it just wouldn't work. So for now, high graphic online shooters still seem unstable in game native, which isn't too surprising since these titles demand more power and optimization. For the second test, I tried Goose Goose Duck, a lightweight multiplayer game similar to Among Us, only about one gigabyte in size. This one actually worked really well. It launched on the first attempt without crashing, loaded in a couple of minutes, and let me create an account and connect to servers successfully. Gameplay was smooth and and stable. The only drawback was the controls. Since the emulator doesn't map direct touch controls, you need to move by dragging your finger like a mouse. It's a little awkward, but the game itself ran fine, which shows good progress. For the third test, I wanted to try a heavier single-player title, Poppy Playtime 1, which is also free on Steam and about 4 gigabytes. The download and installation went smoothly, and when I clicked play, it started up on the first try. The launch process did take a few minutes, but once the game was running, performance was very solid, similar to what you'd expect on win ladder. No major glitches, just stable gameplay. So overall, Game Native Emulator version 0.3.1 is showing steady improvements. The update fixes important bugs, improves stability, and makes Steam Cloud syncing more reliable. From these tests, lighter multiplayer games and even some heavier single-player titles are playable, but high-end online shooters still struggle. It's still early in development, but the progress is clear. If updates keep coming, Game Native could become the best way to enjoy Steam on mobile. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe for more emulator updates, and let me know in the comments which Steam games you'd like me to test next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.